Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for listening on my podcast and on YouTube. This is Sarah at my Ideal Church of Universal Ethics, and I also practice a mental wellness process. And um, the last one I talked about, last thing I talked about was mental illness being a disability, if I can remember right. Um, my mentor told me to talk today, even even though I'm not sure how this is going to come out. Um, most platforms and organizations on the internet abhor suicide and don't want to encourage it because of legalities and because of uh, it being an undesirable subject. But um, I talked about it yesterday because I do believe that we live in a world that really doesn't encourage us to live because not all of us, especially um, if you live in the United States or any, uh, any pointed capitalist country where money is the focus, I'll put it that way, where money is more of the focus than people, than needs, than human needs and human, human skills and human abilities and human uh, creativity. You know, even, even if you're a creative person... Uh, you're encouraged to uh, sell it because that's what helps you make a living. That's what helps you uh, improve the quality of your life. If you have more money, you can improve the quality of your life. If you have more money, people may uh, look up to you more. If you have more money, um, you get more respect. If you have more money, people are more likely to give you support and help you. Money talks. I don't know how many Americans and people you know, in similar countries have this idea that money talks. I don't know if their parents, parents told, I don't know if parents told us that, or um, just people in general, you know, people at school, people at work, people um, anywhere. Money talks. Money makes the world go round. And they'll say, they might, I, I've heard that uh, lo- love is not, love doesn't uh, put food on the table. You know, poetry and art and um, talking doesn't put food on the table. You know, you have to have a trading ability or a trading skill if you want to survive in America or any other similar capitalist or, or country, if you will. If you don't like the word capitalist, I'll, I'll baby you and say any country that focuses more on money, you know, more on money than on uh, people. So um, I was dealing with how that related to mental illness and disabilities, um, and especially a case like my own, I know I'm not the only one, where a child has a disability, they're born with one, or they, they develop one when they're three years old or when they're five or whatever, and um, either they have, a, they have a disease or an injury or an environmental factor, such as what I went through, and they go on on supplemental security income, and maybe their mother does too, their parents do too, because they have disabilities, or the spouse, their spouse ran off on them, or uh, died, or whatever, so there are situations where we are analog, you know, this is to uh, computer-oriented minds, we're analog, we're not neat little little uh, squares on a computer screen. Um, we're not um, we're not little computer we're not computer programs. Now uh, maybe we can say we live in some kind of matrix or we you know I, I can use that maybe as an analogy, boy, an analog analogy, boy word word relations, word you know related words. I can say that we, we maybe we live in a matrix or a program, a social program or a, social, a societal programming that says if you don't make money, if you don't have this, that, or that, or that, or that, you're worthless. And when you have a mindset like that, 
and you don't believe you're winning, if you don't believe that you can override or overcome that, and you don't believe you have the support you need to help override or overcome, or, or maybe maybe you could have the support, but you don't believe you do, or you don't believe that it's there, you don't believe it'll ever be there, you don't believe you, you're worthy of it, so don't even, uh, don't even try, um, you won't survive, you know, in a, in a matrix or a programming like that. So uh, that's, that's sort of what I'm touching on again. Um, I said in my last presentation that if I'm still alive, you'll, you'll hear from me. And I guess you're hearing from me again. I'm still, you know, my roommate asked me how I was doing today. And um, I told him, basically. And I said, I'm, I'm safe. I'm, I'm safe right now. I'm not about to do anything. But I'm feeling defeated. You know, I, I don't want to believe that I'm defeated. But I feel like I am. Just you know, thank goodness uh, when I thank goodness when I was in the mental health system. Still, I learned even from uh, therapists there that feelings are not facts. You know, you you can feel a certain way and it can pass, but if your environment doesn't change, e even experts might say, remove yourself from the environment. What if it's all over the place? What if you can't get away from it? Or what if you don't know how? Or what if, again, you don't believe you have the support to get out? Even even experts might say, or even survivors or experts might say, um, before you leave your narcissist abuser, um, make sure you have support. Make sure you have someone to help you move, or you have an extra income. Or you have uh, an organization, or a group of people, or friends, or family, or whatever that can that can help you, that can back you up, have your back. You know, in case uh, the abuser comes after you, or you you're having a hard time uh, starting over again. You can't just start over again in a vacuum. And uh, I feel like I'm in a vacuum right now. I'm. Voicing myself on social media, on podcasts, and YouTube. I'm, I'm doing YouTube, yeah, because <laughs> YouTube's a big thing, and I'm a small channel. But I'm voicing myself because I want the world to know, no matter what happens to me, no matter, no matter what happens, I want the world to know that someone did try and struggle and fight it off, even if they didn't win. And I want the world to know that there may be other ways to fight mental illness. There may be other ways to, uh, if you have trouble in the system or in therapy, or if, you, if you're in therapy and you would like something extra, you know, to kind of uh, enforce it, it's there. Um, if I die or something happens, if I don't make it, I plan to leave my material up so people can at least watch it. Now, if something happens, I don't know uh, if anyone will know, unless they just don't hear from me. They might, they might suspect that I died. They might suspect that I killed myself. They might suspect that... Um, so I don't know if there will be anyone even after me to, to testify that I, I either died, died naturally or, you know, an illness or you know, or something happened, I got hit by a car, or, you know, whatever. But I'm, I'm going to try and be here as long as possible. Um, this kind of thing has to be talked about. Our, our near lack of empathy and compassion in our society and in our culture, and, you know, it, it really can't survive. Even empathy and love and it cannot survive under a system that, that's focused more on money. I believe that. You know, go ahead and call that my opinion, but I, I believe that that uh, when, when you try to love and seek love, when you try to support and seek support, when you try to have compassion and seek compassion, empathy, sympathy, and you seek it, 
Um, it's difficult to have it and get it. Burnout can happen very quickly under a system that tells you that you're not enough because you don't make enough money or a system that, that shuts you out because you don't have enough money you don't have money or you, don't, you can't make a living yourself. Let me end again with this. There are people that have disabilities that they're born with. There are people that have disabilities and inabilities to work and make their own living when they're five years old, when they're three years old. I'll testify one more time. Um, I don't know if I was born with a disability or not. Um, I, w I was born with a problem with my eyes, and I'm not legally blind. And I don't, don't know if that'll constitute anything with, with Social Security or not. Um, but I, I was born with that. I don't see right with my eyes. That's the only way I'll explain it, because I'll, you know, I'll, 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 uh, I'll use up the rest of my time on this presentation. I'm using the freebie of Spreaker. Thank you again, Spreaker. Um, yeah, 15 minutes. Um, thank you for that. I wish I had more, but thank you. Um, some people are born with disabilities. Others develop them before they're old enough to work, before they're 18, before they're even freaking 16, before they're even in, 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 in high school, before they're even in grade school. I developed my, my disability when I was born. I developed my, my bigger disability mental illness when I was, when I was three. And it was because environmental things happened, which I won't go into. I don't want to traumatize anyone or re-traumatize myself. But I went through some very serious traumatizations that compromised my ability to even learn how to navigate in the world properly. And I'm still having trouble because I didn't even get the treatment I needed because my, my mother, God bless her, rest in peace, mama, couldn't get me the treatment I needed. All she could afford was, uh, was the county, the county uh, mental services. And um, she tried. She tried to get me help. She tried to get me help so I could, I could go to school. And all I got was nine months in a mental institution. And I came out even more messed up than I was when I went in. And um, I was bullied at school after that. Had to go to special ed. Till I graduated, till I finished high school, I had to go to special ed. Had to spend my junior and sen half my junior year and my full senior year at the adult center um, when I was 18 to finish high school. And I still took several years to finish. I didn't finish high school until I was 22. So mental illness is a factor. And mental illness can be environmental. I'm glad NAMI recognizes that it's not just a brain disorder. It can also be environmental. But it's very hard to be proven with Social Security, and even after Social Security approves you, it's very hard to prove it in the world and in society and with, with the people that, that, unless they have a heart, unless they have empathy and compassion and sympathy and support and love, and they've got your back, and they know that, that, that your disability is not who you are, and you're not making it up, and you're not messing around with them, you're not using it, you're not manipulating anyone. So um, listen to your heart, people. Search your feelings. If you think you live in a society that's just not conducive to you, you're probably right. Let's fight this. And thank you, Mentor. Thank you, Ani. He got pretty upset with me last night. I think we, we cried together. He was afraid he was going to lose me. Thank you, Ani, for your support. And thank you, uh, Polly Partners, for your support, too. And thank you, Bruce, for your support. Bye.